All right, summing up. I'm completely aware that was a lot to, today. I, I, I know I have a lot to say about globalization and international development. My personal trajectory is, is partially to blame for that. And also because I think it's very important that you understand that digitalization and the global digital revolution does not happen in a vacuum. Right. It, is, it happens in a, in a very real historical, economic, social and political context that we have to be aware of if we really want to understand the opportunities and also the limitations of the digital revolution. And the digital revolution has contributed new aspects to that, making it at some aspects much more complex. Um, but has it made the world flat? Huh? I leave that for you to decide. So let's have a look at some of the flatteners and unflatteners. Um, on, on the one hand, we globalize the global flow of goods in capital. That's for sure. You know, free trade and international financial agreements. That's true. And as well, we globalize the flow of information due to the digital revolution. So now this made the world a much smaller space base informationally. So these two are surely flatteners of the world. And it, for example, allows a, a poor person, a micro entrepreneur, for example, in Cusco, Peru, to sell the local arts craft now globally, because people can use the global informational infrastructure to find this person. This person can offer it globally on the internet. And also now these goods can be can be sold due to free trade, often very effectively and efficiently. And global financial regulations allow them this person to be paid. So what a great world is flat story. The world is really flat. We all have the same opportunities. Well, with regard to that, with regard to information, goods and capital, a lot of financial globalization going on there. But it's true. It made the world a flatter place. On the other hand, then what we do not globalize really in this period of globalization is uh, the globalization of social mobility. So you are not free to really work in another in any other country you want to or, or to live in this other country. You kind of like limit global mobility to, to tourism. You know, you can visit and have a look, but then after like a week or two or latest a month or three months, you've got to get out of there again. Um, and this introduces big distortions also in the global labor market. Because if you think like, well, I'm skilled, I, I could do a lot of things if I would just have access to resources, but you cannot really prove it. There's there are very limited possibilities. You can get a chance. On the other hand, there are some people who might not be as qualified. They just happen to be born in the right spot and and there they are protected. So also in terms of economic efficiency, as Adam Smith would say, you know, there are big, important inequalities. Uh, on that level. And if you compare it to previous periods of globalization, in the 1800s, there was a globalization of people, not of money or goods. People, the movement of people was globalized. A significant portion of continents were shifting. And, you know, but in this period of globalization, we do not globalize really the movement of people. We don't. Additionally, there are severe and persistent inequalities. Some of them come historically, even going back to colonialism. Some of them have been reinforced rather recently by some policy agenda that often measured with two kinds of sticks. And, um, and last but not least, um, we have to say it nicely, a very partial global governance structure. We have a global governance structure that is not really set up to be able to do what we would wish it to do. You know, it's, it's dysfunctional in many ways. It's not set up to be what it's supposed to be. So that's the global picture. Yeah, that's the global context in which, which digitalization happens. Oh, and then also on the more concrete, on the micro level, we also made a, a lot of progress. So for example, the Millennium Development Goals are really a best practice, one of the first global agendas where the world worked together and achieved important goals. Um, so this is a big success more recently actually achieved. We have a new agenda and also the work of individual people, uh, philanthropists that have made a big effort that gave more than half of their wealth away and say, I don't, I don't need all these billions and billions of dollars. Just, just take it more than half of the wealth. So a very interesting recent developments also very hands on. 
So this is the global context in which digitalization happens. And I think now you have a better, I hope you have a better idea of understanding also the summary that I just said in the five minutes. Uh, so thanks for the patience and thanks for watching. I hope you gain some interesting insights. And um, remember that digitalization happens in this real world historical context.